the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire i call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may lead moses the prophet said to the people he said i have said before you life and death blessing and cursing he said that i counsel you advise you to choose life that both you and your descendants may live so by introducing that scripture we understand that in this scripture moses liked the people to understand that whatever you experience in life are provoked by the choices you make in life whatever you experience in life is provoked into manifestation by the choices you make in life no matter how much we think or what we believe things do not just actually happen do you understand me things are provoked into manifestation they are provoked into manifestation he says this is life this is death this is blessing this is cursing he said i have said all this before you today and i counsel you to choose life so that you may live he said but if you choose death disobedience not only you will die your descendants will die hallelujah we have spoken a lot about this i'm just going to refresh our mind please arrange it somewhere i'm just going to refresh our mind over the things that we have learned and we have heard amen hallelujah somebody say choice say choice the greatest responsibility that god has given unto men is the ability to choose there is no other responsibility that is greater to humanity than the ability to choose so choosing is a responsibility do you understand now there are various things that god has given to us but listen to this one of the greatest privilege of being alive is the ability and the right to choice a dead man has no choice i told you if dead men had choice they would choose who will attend their funeral they would choose where they will be buried a dead man has no choice non-living things have no choice this pulpit did not choose to be here i chose where it should be do you understand your dress did not choose you to wear it you chose what to wear so the greatest privilege that has been given to people who are alive is the ability and the right to choice can i shock you you cannot even choose where you will spend eternity after it once you die on earth you lose the right to choice the only place where a man can choose is on the earth if you die on earth and you were not in the lord you will go to hell even though you don't like hell so wherever you find yourself after the earth depends on the choices you made while you were still on earth take that wherever you will find yourself after the earth depends on the choices you made while you were still on earth
You understand? So, people that live anyhow should understand that the choices they will make have an impact on their life and their eternity. Are you listening to me? Tell somebody, choose well. Tell somebody else, choose well. When God created Adam, the first thing we see in the life of Adam is God giving Ad, showing Adam that I have created you. The first time Adam gets into, the, into, into life, the first thing Adam is faced with is with choice. God sets a garden and God puts all kinds of trees in them. And God puts at the middle of the garden the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And God says to the man, you can eat out of every tree, but not from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is choice. So man has two options. He sees the tree, but he should not eat from the tree. Now people may say, it would have been easier for man if God did not put the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That is a lie. Listen to this. If God takes away from you your ability, your right to choose, then your service to him is not genuine. If God takes away from you your right to choose then your service to god please arrange this sound better then your service to god is not genuine if my service to god must be genuine the service must be on the basis of my choice do you understand i must choose to serve god god cannot force me to serve him if God forces me to serve him, then the service is not real. Are you following me at all? So, many of us are here in church today. It's a choice. You, choose, you chose to come here. Life is made of choices. Life is made of choices. The power to control your tomorrow lies in your ability to choose today people make wrong choices and when the fruits of that choices come they start blaming the devil it is not the devil that chose for you you chose it by yourself understand that when this when the devil came to eve he did not cut off the fruit and give eve he just showed that he said eat the fruit now if the devil had stretched his hand and touched the tree then god will have intervened but as long as the devil comes to provoke eve to choose god will be there but god will not talk because you must choose when the devil begins to to tempt you into something that is against the will of god god is present but god cannot act because you have to choose every temptation is the devil giving us an opportunity to choose to do the things that do not glorify god that is temptation a temptation is the devil giving you an opportunity to choose to do the things that do not glorify god so if i say i am tempted i am saying that satan is giving me opportunity to choose to do something that would with get God offended that does not please him he's asking me to do things that are against divine instructions and divine commandments he's asking me to do, disobey God when the devil says to Eve when he says eat from this tree and God has said don't eat from the tree he's giving that Eve an opportunity to have to choose either by obeying God or disobeying God are you with me child of God now, don't forget what I said. The power to control your tomorrow lies in your ability to make choices today. If you make wrong choices today, don't blame the devil tomorrow when the consequence for your choice comes on you. Many people don't like to choose. 
I told you why. I said because people don't often like to choose because they do not trust the wisdom, their wisdom in choosing or they do not want to bear the consequences of a wrong choice. Somebody wants to get married and he wants the pastor to choose a woman for him. Two things. Number one, either he does not trust his wisdom to choose or number two, he does not want to bear the consequence of a wrong choice so that in case the marriage does not work, he will say it is the pastor that gave her to me. That is what Adam said to God. He said the woman you gave to me. I didn't choose. If you gave me 10, I chose this one. Then I didn't choose her. Because when God created Eve, she was the only woman. So when he brought her to Adam, Adam did not actually really choose her. He had no choice. That was the only thing that existed that looked like him. That is why God no longer imposes himself on the choice of man. Because the only time that God brought a, a, a choice, Adam said, the woman you gave to me, I didn't choose her, you gave her to me. You see him actually pushing the responsibility to God, forgetting that although it was a choice of God, it was his mismanagement of the choice that brought the trouble, not the choice. Are you with me, child of God? So what does he mean to choose? A choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more options. A choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced when faced with two or more options. Hallelujah. What is a choice? An act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more options. Amen. Listen to this. You are a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit. You pray. You fast. But hear me very well. Life and death do not lie in heaven or hell. It lies in the power of your choice. Don't make wrong choices in life and blame Satan later on. If you want to enjoy tomorrow, choose to do the things today that will make you enjoy tomorrow. I want you to be conscious that whatever you are today is the full expression of the choices you made yesterday. So, if you are not happy with what you are seeing today, first of all understand it's not just because of the devil of a charm it's because of the wrong choices you make now if you must change your tomorrow be careful of the choices you make today there is no witch there is no charm there is no demon that is able to make you face a wrong thing when you made the right choice never satan does not have the kind of power we give to him is a lie in the scripture the highest thing that god says satan has is wisdom not power why because the work of the devil is to deceive he comes and manipulates you into a wrong choice every time the devil wants to frustrate the fulfillment of your destiny he manipulates your power to choose because when you choose the wrong thing you are gone whatever we are today was oh god somebody goes to the park and there are many cars you say i will go with this car then that car has an accident you made the choice there were many cars they didn't beat you to enter that one you enter that one somebody decides i'm going to marry sister elizabeth is a choice then you get married to her and you are in hell they didn't beat you is a choice somebody decides not to be eating when gastric come it is the result of the choice not to eat you will not say it is satan no 
Satan has not given you gastric. You have not eaten. Gastric is the fruit of not eating of starvation. If the fast was not commanded by God, he will not sustain you and give you strength in the fast. It is your choice. So be careful of the choices you make. The, the worst thing I can tell this, many of us, we have made choices that can, can affect our destiny without having a moment of reflection. You don't just choose to get married. <laughs> marriage is a long time. It's for life. It's very long. You can send your child to the wrong school and your child gets possessed. You chose the school. I'm trying to make you understand that the fruit that we eat today is provoked by the seed we planted called choice. It, it is not far. The purpose of Satan is to keep you blaming him so that you will not know how he's attacking you. No. It's a demon. No, it's not a demon. How did the demon attack you? He manipulated you in your choice. He made you marry a wrong man. Now the man is beating you up every day. Because when the man came, you thought God has answered your prayer. Not knowing, Satan brought a wrong person in order to manipulate your choice. Choose the wrong man and have the wrong life. This calls for great wisdom and great patience before we make choices. Because whatever we choose is what we will have. We saw the scripture, he said, I said before you life and death. He said, but choose life for your own good. Are you following me, child of God? I've showed you many things. I'm going to take them fast. I told you that there are seven important choices in the life of a person. How many? How many? Number one, the choice of what you feed on. God told Adam, there's a tree of life. There is a tree of knowledge and good and evil. Choose the tree of life. If you eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you will have what? Death. When we speak of feeding on, I am meaning the choice of what you feed your spirit on. That kind of choice, when you make a wrong choice in what you feed your spirit on, you will actually bring what you fed your spirit with. Nobody eats Gary and vomits rice. I'm talking about your spirit and we feed our spirit by the things we hear and see whatever you hear and see is food for your spirit you cannot have faith when you are feeding your spirit with things that bring fear you cannot be holy when you are watching movies that are immoral when you watch movies where there is fornication, immorality, you are feeding your spirit with immorality and what you fed your spirit with, you will bring it out. Try to give me more volume on this mic. Are you with me, child of God? So, be careful what you feed on. It's not every message you listen to. There are messages you listen to that can break your marriage. Yes the choices we make today will either break us or make us tomorrow be careful what you listen to i want to be holy you want to be holy but you are watching movies where there's immorality by constantly feeding your spirit with that kind of information you can't be holy because a man must bring out what he has brought into himself Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, they must speak. But their heart is full by the things the ears hear and the eyes see. Your heart is full with the things that your eyes see and your ears hear. There are some children that are programmed to beat their wives when they get married because when they were in their house, they constantly saw their father beating their mother. So they have fed their spirit with that in their mind. When they get married, when their wife does them something, all they know to do is to slap. Because they fed their spirit with that. Number two. 
something is really wrong with this son, my brother. Number two, what was it? The choice of your company. Of your what? Company. The Bible says, be not deceived, for evil company corrupts good manners. Evil what? Corrupts. Which means, you can have a good heart, a good spirit. If you join yourself with people that are evil, you will become like them. The second most important choice in the life of a man is choosing those he surrounds himself with. Company. And don't forget that your wife is your closest companion. Your husband is your closest companion. So before you marry somebody, check where. Well. Check where. Well. Because once you have married that person, they, in, there's no divorce in Christianity. Whatever you see, you will bear. Are you understanding me? Say the choice of company. We saw Psalms 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand, nor sit. Walk, stand, sit. Amen. Number three choice was what? Choice of whom you serve. Amen. The third important choice in your life is choosing who you shall serve. Joshua 24, 15, Joshua said, As for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Matthew 6, 24, is Jesus said, Nobody can serve God and serve mammon. So, there is a choice of whom you shall serve in your life. When we have a service on Wednesday and 5 o'clock is coming and there are customers in your shop and you know that is a day you have to go and serve God, will you stay and sell to make profit or will you come to church and serve God? Every man must be careful of the choice of who you serve because who you serve is an expression of who will control your life and destiny you can't give yourself more on the pursuit of money and you expect god to answer you when you call upon him mm -mm. he said do not go after what you shall eat after what you shall wear for the pagans run after such he said but you seek it first the kingdom of god number four the choice of whom to obey. Whoever or whatever you obey is what de determines the kind of events that happen into your life. If, they ob if you obey God, good things will happen to you if you obey the devil evil things will happen to you so whoever or whatever you obey is what determines the kind of things that happen to you you can't be obeying satan and expecting to enjoy good things from the lord bible says if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good from the land that's Isaiah 1 18 19 sorry and he says again in Job 36 11 he said if you are obedient and serve him you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure so if I want good things in my life I can't be obeying Satan if God says I should not fornicate no matter how I feel I will not fornicate because obedience to Satan is in unconscious or indirect disobedience to God either you are obeying God or you are obeying Satan there is no middle don't do the things that God says you should not do you will pay simple Lord I want peace God says my child I want holiness so if i am walking in unholiness i lose my right to place demand on the blessing of god god does not bless disobedient people never number five is we must choose what to call the things that happen 
to us. Bible says, and God brought all the animals to Adam and said, name them. He said, whatever name Adam gave them, it was so. Child of God, if there is one great thing that you have that the devil is afraid of, is your ability to give names to your events in your life. If your boss gives you a sack letter and you call it a promotion letter, that sack letter will become a reason why you will get a promotion. You can be with a boy for eight years and the boy promises to marry you and the boy disappoints you. Than to say the boy has broken my heart, you can tell yourself, this guy has left so the best man can enter my life. The way you call it will determine what it will do for you. Don't call yourself a failure. If not, you will fail. Don't call yourself a loser. If not, you will lose. You have an ability. Parents, stop calling your children names that you don't want them to be. This bad luck picking, because you call them so, all you will bring for you will be bad luck. You said so. Satan does not have this power. We have it. Bible says whatever name Adam gave them, it was their name. Even God accepted. Satan accepted. Hey, that's kind of balog married this. So shall it be for you. Be careful how you call the things that happen to you. Do you understand? There's a power in your tongue. You don't just use it anyhow. Call it rightly and you'll get the best from it. So this is what? The choice of how to call the things that happen to us no matter what happens to you call it good bible says in the beginning the earth was from formless empty and darkness and god said let there be light god didn't say let there be why is there darkness there was darkness but god called what he wanted god is teaching you that in the midst of sickness you can actually say to yourself I am healthy call it something else doctor says hey madam you have a fibro say well doctor as for me this is a child call it well because what you say is what you will have Bible did not say you will have what the doctor has said he said you will have what you say it doesn't matter what I say as your pastor what I say is to help you on what you should say are you with me child of God so the ability to call the things that happen to us is what empowers us to control the things that happen to us whatever you name you control the ability to call the things that happen to us is what empowers us to control the things that happen to us satan can bring a wrong thing into your life and you say this shall become a good thing for me because you have called it so that thing must end up bringing you good number six is the choice of how you respond to the bad things that happen to you Amen. I made you understand that in life, bad things may happen. Amen. But the way you respond to the things, to the bad things that happen to you, is what determines if those bad things will make you bitter or better. There are some women that have become bitter because they have had several marital disappointment. Now, a man disappoints you and you get bitter. When another man comes to marry you, it is that your bitterness that will drive him. Learn, always learn from experiences, whether good or bad. Learn from them and move ahead with your life. Bad things will happen. But how do I respond? How do I respond? You treat people well and they insult you. How do you respond? Number seven, the choice of how to respond to the good things that happen to us. To what? To what kind of things? To what kind of things? Good things that happen to us. 
there are many people they have allowed the good things that god has done for them separate them from god himself for example in luke chapter 15 from verse 12 the bible speaks of a man that has two sons he says and the younger son came and said to the father go and share your property and give my own share when his father gave him he said when the father gave him he left the house he left his father's presence so there are many people they, they they have allowed the blessing of god separate them from the presence of god when you had no job you were in church for every service but since you had the job you have become too tired to attend service so the reason why you can no longer serve god like before is the blessing god gave you is the marriage many people cry when they're in africa they pray they fast they are committed to god and god gives them a visa they go abroad and they don't go to church again so the breakthrough or the blessing has become a reason why they are no longer before god never allow the blessings of god separate you from the presence of god when god blesses you it should not make you proud it should make you humble there are people now they are humble they are only humble because they are poor they are only humble because they lack you see the same people when God lifts them up. You see pride shows forth. Why? They have responded negatively to a good thing that God gave them. And this happens to many people that are pastors. You see a young man is doing good. Then God anoints him. He says he's not a prophet. Everybody must bow before him. If you don't call him Papa, you have entered trouble. You must call him Papa by force. You must call him and they start adding titles major supernatural prophet demon destroyer para paranomic seer now i'm not against those names if god gave you the name yes but if you decided to add the name on yourself because you think that prophet is too small for you you should add something there major general commander prophet no problem if it is god that gives you is okay but if you think that prophet is too small to express the kind of anointing you carry there is a problem in your head it's called pride many people get blessed and they can no longer relate with their friends pride amen i gave you the dimensions of what the dimension of choices i said the first dimension of choices is what in your thoughts the first dimension of choices is in thoughts the first place where every man must understand the first place where choice starts is in your thoughts you must choose the kind of thoughts to think because as a man thinketh, so your life will be a direct expression of the things that are in your mind the things you see in your life are a direct reflection of the things that are present in your mind as a man think it as a man as a man so if a man wants to be rich what was a man think you can't be rich when you are thinking like a poor man every poor man has a poor mind remember whatever controls the mind controls the man are you with me child of god tell somebody whatever you see in your life is a reflection of the things that are hidden in your mind tell somebody else whatever you see in your life is a reflection of the things that are hidden in your mind so your thoughts and we show you from scripture philippians 4 verse what verse 8 he says whatever things i will show you seven things to think on let us see it the seven things you must how to know if you are thinking good thoughts whatever things are what number one it must be true number two noble number three just number four pure number five lovely number six of good report and number seven praiseworthy number one your thoughts must be what true number two noble number three just number four p 
you number five lovely number six of good report number seven praiseworthy so anytime you are thinking ask yourself if what you are thinking falls in these seven things true noble just pure lovely of good report praiseworthy so my thoughts must fall in this line don't forget some of you were here we gave these seven things this is very important if you didn't write it down last week write it down today these are the seven things you these are the seven qualities of good thoughts can we see it again whatever things are true whatever things are honest whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of a good report whatever things are virtual if there be any praise think on these things think think on these things thinking that your mother will die is it good thinking that you fail exam is it good thinking that you will die is it good so what does the bible say so these are the you can't be thinking that your marriage will break bible says don't think of such things even if satan brings such realities to you don't accept to think them you have the right to choose what you think in your mind it is your mind not our mind your mind satan cannot impose what you choose in your mind is whose mind is whose mind come and talk to me is whose mind is whose mind come and talk to me are you with me here child of god so whatever things are what true number two honest number three just number four pew number five lovely number six of good report number seven praise worthy amen so those are the seven qualities of good thoughts seven what is very important to have this in you so that when you are thinking you judge your thoughts with these things you can't just sit down you are thinking that maybe you will die is it a good thought it is these things we think that destroy our lives for as a man things so easy number one is what true number two honest so my thoughts must be thoughts of truth and the truth is the scripture number two is honest you can't be thinking how to steal somebody's money is it honest number one true number two honest number three just just mean justice think of things that release people from oppression number four pure i like this one purity i will say blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god number five lovely what is lovely beautiful number six of good report and number seven praiseworthy have you written them down are you sure all right the second dimension of choice is in words someone say words say words say words right so last week we spoke a lot i made you understand that you should be careful the things you choose to say because what you say has either a positive or a negative impact on your life and that of the hearers whatever you say has either a negative or positive impact on your life or on the life of the people who are listening to you are you with me but now i want to emphasize that's why i want to go back again to the seven things in your thoughts if your thoughts don't have those seven things your words will be dangerous bible say out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak so if i sit down if i am thinking thoughts that are honest how will my words be if i think thoughts that are good how will my words be so truly what a man speaks is a reflection of what the man thinks 
Anybody who thinks good about their marriage cannot speak evil about their marriage. Anybody who thinks good about their children cannot speak evil about their children. What you are speaking about it is truly a reflection of what you think about it. You may say you did not mean it. That's your problem. It's what you think. Are you listening to me here? Remember our thoughts. Number one, true. Number two, honest. I'm trying to show you, if you don't have thoughts like that, your words will not be like that. If I think lovely thoughts, I will speak lovely words. If I think honest thoughts, I will speak honest words. If I speak thoughts, if I think thoughts of good report, I will speak words of good report. Whatever a man speaks is a reflection of what the man thinks which means if you don't choose to think the right things you may actually not have choice in what you will say because you will say what you are thinking do you understand me so i i think i've spoken a lot on that last week you can get it and see what i said glory be to god tell me whatever a man speaks is a reflection of what the man thinks one more time again whatever a man speaks is a reflection of what the man thinks i showed you from the bible the bible says in uh you remember the scripture psalms is it 64 verse 3 he said these people speak bitter words and the bitter words are arrows so every time you speak a bitter word is an arrow but the bible says speak the things that edify people that listen to you when you want to talk no matter the anger in your heart do not say things that will hurt people because you are hurt choose the right words choose the right words understand that words are seeds they have more power than we think you come back home your child has broken your tv when you want to discipline that child please choose the words you will speak because you may just start speaking to him but luck picking that's what your life will be you're not going to get anything good and those words you are speaking you have implanted the spirit of failure in that child's life by the words you spoke and after some years you will carry the child's picture to pray a man of god pray we spoke the following i should say my auntie not be your auntie now you talk am. many of us today our children are walking in the fulfillment of the prophecies we gave them you nothing good will come for your life now it has become your major prayer point you said it choose your words in marriage husband choose your words wife choose your words as a wife don't just say what you want as a husband be careful understand that women are fragile some women in fact women even you can beat them and they forgive you but there are certain things you will say <laughs> though they will forgive you it's still in their heart why it's because the wounds of the heart are not easily detected but they are more painful than the wounds on the body when somebody has a wound on the body you can see the person and see the wound but when somebody has a wound in their heart that was provoked by harsh words the person may dress well and appear to be happy there are many wives that appear to be happy but inside they are in pain because they have been wounded by insults from their husband insults from their husband's family insults from their in-law people have said things that have wounded their heart but they appear strong but they are not strong and it's a matter of time before they actually explode and if they have not also learned about the power of choice they will take their anger and pour it back on an innocent child or on an innocent person number three the choice of your deeds i told you i said simple this one is actually simple we must choose to do the things that glorify christ and not the things that only satisfy our flesh choose to do the things that glorify christ and not just the things that will satisfy your flesh 
if you want to do something, ask yourself, this thing I'm doing, will Jesus be happy? That's the major question. Are you with me, blessed child of God? So, when I want to act, everything you do, either it will glorify Christ or it will, can I satisfy, it will magnify Satan. Let me put it like that. Everything we do. When you have this kind of thinking pattern, right? When you are faced with a temptation, it will be easy for you to leave. Because you will ask yourself, what I am about to do, will it glorify Christ or will it satisfy my flesh and, and honor Satan? Don't forget what I told you. When you disobey God, you have obeyed Satan. If you displease God, you have pleased Satan. There is nothing like, there is no middle in this matter. Glory be to the most high God. Now we move ahead. Now, we must understand that they are the choices we make in life depend on the forces. Or let me say this, the quality of the choices we make depend of, on the forces that influence our choices. Choices are influenced by forces. Forces, I will show you them. The quality of the choices we make in life depend on the kind of forces that influence our choices. Adam and Eve, they made a wrong choice because an evil force influenced that choice. Adam and Eve, the tree had been there in the garden. They never had a mindset to take the fruits. But the day Satan spoke, that was a force. So watch where. Satan will never choose for you. But his work is to influence you. To give you, he's giving you reason why you should choose this thing. God says, don't be adulterous. Husbands, be faithful to your wife. Satan tells you, look at this girl outside. Your friends are doing it. Have they died? It's just what you are a man. Every man does it. He's giving you reason to do it. But he will never naked the girl. You are the one who will naked her yourself. So that you may pay for the choice yourself. Somebody will slap you. Satan will tell you, slap him back. But God says, if they slap you, leave it. Satan will say, you, you leave him waiting. Slap it back. Slap him. Slap it back. How you feel, leave him? They will start to say, you'll be a weak man. Then I threw it. You don't fight on fish, you don't go has in your heart now. Mm, you see her now. They go laugh you now for quarter. They go laugh you for quarter. So you'll be a weak man. This small picking slap you, leave her. You say, Ben, I threw it. Joe go find a bottle. Satan say, Broke the bottle that broke her. Take that bottle, broke her. Bah! As you take the bottle, Satan leaves. He said, God, oh God, God, come and see your child. God, come, come, come. Bah! So I say, You see him. He did not break the head, he influenced you understand that at every instant of your life there are forces assigned to influence your choices at every instant there is choice today i want to go your body tells you don't go you are tired rest is a force we are praying child of god all of us will be up by five to pray yes man of god you sleep five you wake up time to pray your body says sleep 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 no the prophet said we should pray your body says, but you are tired sleep okay just 15 minutes more if you slept for seven hours is it 15 more minutes that we have or you didn't have no let's think of it if <laughs> you actually slept for six hours you did not rest is he adding 15 minutes on the sleep that will give you rest what you slept from nine from from 12 to five so i said no at only 50 just 15 minutes rest a bit what will 15 minutes rest give you uh -uh. he doesn't want you to pray so let's get this forces that influence our choices are you ready are you sure forces that influence our choices number one our desires somebody say desire say desire showing me Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3 on whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust 
of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind look here he is saying that there was a time that we lived in immorality he said it is because of the desires of our hearts the first force that influences your choices in life is desire desire For example, a man wants to get married and the man has a desire for fair women. And they bring three women. One is black, one is black, one is fair. Which one do you think he may likely choose? It's not because she's the correct one. It's because it is his desire. You want to buy an iPhone and you get to the market and you see a samsung an iphone and a nokia which one will you buy what you desire now there may be other phones better than the one you desire but since that is what you desire say no give me the one where i like them i want another one so the first force that influences our choices in life is our desire listen to me the desire in the heart of a man is a great spiritual force that can determine his direction in life. It is very strong. It is very strong. Your desires. If you have the wrong desires, yeah, you are gone. Your desires. Some people right now, <laughs> They are regretting. Remember what I told you? The salary of a wrong choice is what? Is regret. <laughs> when you take a wrong choice, your payment is regret. Hey, if I knew it, where you got to oh, child desire. The desire in the heart of man is a great force. Your direction in life is determined by your desires in life. Can I tell you something? Satan uses our desires for the things of this world to draw us to himself. And God uses our desires for the things of the kingdom to draw us to himself. It means God and Satan, they are in a fight. Their fight is to make you desire them. You cannot pray if you don't desire prayer. You can't pray. It is easy for Satan to make us sin. All he needs to do is to make us desire sin. That's all. When you desire, you will do it. Desire. 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 So, when Satan wants to draw you to himself, he doesn't come. Mm -mm. He uses your desires for the things of the world. Have you not heard that a man will kill his wife in ritual because he desire money? That will say the love of money. It means the desire for money is the root of all evil. In other words, when a man desires money so much passionately, he is ready to do anything to have it. Desire. That will specify that it is not money that is the root of evil. It is our desire. Uncontrollable desire for money. Let me show you something. Show me Genesis chapter 3 verse 3. But of, Eve is talking to Satan. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said you shall not eat it. Nor shall you touch it lest you die. Move ahead. And then the serpent said to the woman. You will not surely. Watch. There is no problem now. She will not see it the fruit. See when she will eat it. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wait now. What's the next verse? So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make her wise. So desire came in. When the devil came to Jesus, he tempted him. 
in the last temptation satan said number one said jesus if you are the son of god turn these stones into bread why jesus was hungry desire for food so when satan came to jesus he wanted to walk on jesus desire he said and jesus fasted and he was hungry in the moment of hunger satan came with a solution for hunger he said turn stone into bread are you not hungry desire satan didn't bring a woman to jesus jesus did not desire a woman satan we only attack listen your desire are the seeds of your temptations and trials in life show me james chapter 1 verse 13 let no one say when he's tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted nor does he himself tempt anyone verse 14 read but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed in tangles trapped verse 15 Lengbasha. then when desire has conceived he gives birth to sin and when sin grow, he give birth to death. When desire has conceived, pregnancy. When the woman saw that the tree, <laughs> if Satan must make a man sleep with a woman, he must make that man desire that woman. Nobody, listen to me. Somebody say. Uh, a, a man wanted to say a man got drunk and he came into his house and and slept with his wife's sister and when they came to me the man said it was drunkenness i said okay if it is drunkenness why did he not make you sleep with your junior brother <laughs> no no why you not go sleep with your brother the man said ah man of god i said you see it is not mimbo mimbo only brought out what you was in your heart but you could not do <laughs> it is true I said it's in a mimbo, a mimbo, not be mimbo. It's desire. No, you said, why did the drunkenness not make you go and catch a man and sleep with him? Why do you go there to that girl? Na mimbo, na mimbo. I said, my brother, I said, accept your fault and repent. Don't blame mimbo. Mimbo is innocent. No, he's innocent. He's not in the matter. I'm trying to show you desire. I said, your desires are the seed of your temptation and trials in life. You will, and you will only be tempted by what you desire. This, it, your, your temptation and your trials in life can never be far from your desires in life. Watch this. The devil knew that Jesus came to restore the kingdom. Not so. Bible says in the last temptation he said the devil carried him onto the highest point of the temple or the mountain and asked him to look and he said he showed jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their glory why the greatest way to feed your desire is by the things you see and hear there is an attack on people today and people don't understand the devil wants the world to become immoral so he doesn't preach it he just enters music and make girls to dress half naked so the more we watch those things we don't know why although we want to stand for god there is always a desire in us for sex not knowing that that desire is fed by what we are watching he said jesus look he wanted desire to come up jesus laughed. he said anything you want to show me i've seen it before you want the desires to come. Nobody can steal what he has not seen. Now the lie on a true. For man for thief, he must see the thief first. Desires. Desires. I don't know if you are listening to me here. Desires. He said, look. The desires in the heart of man are fed by the things he sees and hears if you want to starve the desire for sex stop watching movies where there is sex it is simple it is what you watch that feed the desire although you are praying the desire grows stronger by night and day you don't understand why because 
because you are praying to walk in holiness at your free time you just put a channel and in that film there will be a part not knowing that as you have seen it the desire for sex will grow and you don't know till a day it becomes uncontrollable and you find yourself in something that you did not want to do because there is a point apostle paul said the thing i want to do i don't do it means there is a point in your life where you lose your choice when demon take over he will do what he wants not what you want desire this is a force even god said when you pray he said whatsoever you desire the strongest aspect in prayer is the desires in the heart of men when you pray with that desire there will be no passion There are prayer points we give in church where people pray and know they don't want to pray. When desire is there, don't know desire. Desire. So, you, you must be careful of the desires in your heart. Listen to me. All of you look at me. I want you to see this trick of the devil. The devil wants a young man to have a sexual affair with his neighbor. He is not thinking those things. First day, one day, she might be bathing, and Satan will make it somehow that you should pass and see something about her. He will just see it once. Maybe he saw her, 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 her back or something, and he will just go. Another time, she, she will maybe be wake up in the morning, go some of these girls, I don't know where they are possessed, so it's their normal life. She wake up in the morning, she will not wear breastwear. And she go and be sweeping the compound. And Satan will just make the brother to go out at that time. And he will see her breast. I'm teaching you something. You know what he's doing? He's beating desire. And the man say, ah, you know, ah, now small picking. Wait, thank God, rich. We go, no. When this, Bible say, when desire has fully grown, it means desire to grow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When desire has fully grown, when it be, when it grow, you cannot, like, the labor will come, you will deliver it so this is it what i've learned you kill it at the level of desire kill it there when say, listen to me my people when satan begins to make you notice some certain things about people if you're a boy just know that he has a plan against you you should not notice the size of a woman's breast or a buttocks it does not concern you once you start noticing it desire is growing in your heart that's what it does that's what it does it is easy for girls young girls to sleep with men easy satan makes them desire brazilian mesh and they want to do anything to have it so work on desire you will not be able to control sin if you don't control what you desire the problem is not sin it's your desire he said when desire has fully grown it gives birth to what to sin so if there is no desire there is no sin so desire is a force that can influence your choice a man is already programmed to choose what he desires it's already programmed are you learning something here are you sure are you sure number two can i move ahead the second thing that influences your choice is emotions someone say emotions someone say emotions show me james chapter 1 verse 20 for man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that god desires now i just chose one scripture for it now look here another spiritual force that controls the choices of men are the emotions they have For example, a woman will not tell her husband, you fool, when she gets angry. That anger will make her say, you fool. So, the emotion in that time has helped her to choose you fool. There were many words to choose, oh, it is fool that came. 
Now, normally she can I'm teaching some. Normally she cannot tell her husband, "You fool." Normally, a man will not want to beat his wife, but when anger come among all the ways he can discipline her, he will choose to break her head. Why will you choose to beat your wife? It's not you. Will have, your choice was influenced by your emotion on that time. He said, be careful for the anger of man does not work. And in other words, when a man is under the emotion called anger, anything you do will not glorify God. Do you know that the Bible says, God said, God said that Moses was the most humble man on earth. And do you know that the major strength of humility is obedience? But the Bible says, one day, after Moses has walked with God for 40 years without making one mistake, one day God said, Moses, go and speak to the rock. And Moses went and hit the rock. Bible says, and Moses was angry and he hit the rock. It means Moses did not want to disobey God. Moses cannot choose to disobey God. But anger forced him to choose to hit the rock. Emotions. Be careful of emotions. There are certain things that you would have never done if you were not in that emotional state. You have never done it. You know, <laughs> I always tell my daughters when I have meeting with young people that boys have tricks. Most boys, when you go to the, I think any boy you enter his house and he changes the song and you begin to hear. Just to me, you like my brother. Just to <laughs> my sister, my sister, my sister. Arise and run. I just change song. <laughs> I love you from the rest of my life. I don't know the song. What is it? I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, oh. Ifu nyanya, mana nyanya. If Unyanya, oh yeah, eh, eh, on Ambulombi, well, anyhow, they sing it, anyhow. If Unyanya, Malanyanya, you know what that song is doing? That song is changing your emotional state. Yes, yes, it's a trick. So, Satan knows these things. Do you know that eh, you can be happy now? I watch a movie, start crying. How can a film make you cry? I went, I went a few more, all things are lie. But you cry. You know why? Once the movie can affect your emotion, it can bring out tears from you. But everything in the movie is fake. Oh. Wait. After this stuff, I said that. No, it never died in a film. But <laughs> you cry. Do you get it? Take down your whole be my brother. I'm trying to show you that your movie can affect your emotion. It can affect your emotion. A man can be happy and you, you just watch football, they beat your favorite team. Come on, I think you mean pass, come up here. Fool. He was happy. But he was watching football, they beat his team. Now that defeat, he, listen, he is not in the team. Those players, although they have beat them, they will still pay them. Nobody is paying him to support that team. <laughs> I want to show you the stupidity, the stupidity of the matter. They, they are not paid to support the team. He has wasted his time. Wasted his life be. Then now he's angry on top. Wait, till, they don't beat Real de Madrid. They don't beat them. There was one time around 2000 and um, 10 and 12, the greatest way to have high blood pressure was to watch Cameroon match. Yeah. I was like, hey, the boy, hey, hey, hey. That is when I resigned because one day I've, you didn't watch my heart beat. I said, What is this? <laughs> my heart beat, there's not a problem. <laughs> I started watching match again. Those, I don't know what happened at that time. You know, it's, there was one time they were winning, then they stopped winning. I said, The watch match was here, had a beat. Well, kick the ball now. Kick the eh, eh, kick. The, oh, kick and so I did, I did my foot there. Never don't make boss. Oh, hey! You watch him. You watch. You are watching match. You stand up. You look. 
Oh, you're going to ask TV. Now, wait till my head. Now, for your hustle, the man never fish. But you know what? The thing you are watching is creating emotion. One time, Camero, when Camero won the African Nations Cup, a man, I was there, he bought drink for two million in a bar. He said, everybody drink and he paid two million cash. Don't worry, next day your sales will come back. Don't worry. <laughs> But this is it. Under at that point of emotion, people make choices do not carry the consequence. When somebody is angry, he just wants to insult you. He does not care what the insult will do after. He just wants, I'm going to curse you. I go slap you back. When you are under an emotional influence, it makes you to make choices not carrying the consequence of the choice. Just do one now. After we go think what will happen, do and first. The next day, the man may cry. Two million. Yes, you bought it. You know why? He was happy. I mean, most wives know that. All wives have that game. Wives know when the husband is happy, it's time to bring a list. All of them know, we know that style. Even my wife, she just came at the children. Go and ask that you something. She knows that, but that day I'm happy. So I'm, one day I said, but why is it that? Some day, list are just coming to me. What's happening? I know she remember her auntie. Daddy, good afternoon. Daddy, I want uh, the name of God. I want. I said, there's something happening in this house. <laughs> Why? Since their mother knows I am happy because she knows. Sometimes when I'm not ang- when I'm angry, she will tell the children, "Don't go to the room where Daddy is angry." Oh yeah, she said, "Don't go to the room." <laughs> no, she knows that if you enter there, you may get the consequence of the anger. They'll be, maybe they'll shouting. Daddy, she will cut them and say, for your own good. <laughs> you, you are going to a volcano, you will erupt on you. <laughs> Why? Because she understands that I'm a, I can be a good father, but when I am in a bad emotional state, they may see a bad side of me. It's not really who I am. It's what I am doing because of the emotional state I am under. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? So, when we are under the influence of an emotional force, it makes us to make choices without thinking or caring about the consequence of the choices. One time, I was doing <laughs> I had an issue between a man and a woman. The woman said, the man promised her a cow. <laughs> the man is glad, I'm glad to I'll buy you a car. The woman catch him. Five come out the car for me. I laugh with her. I say, my brother, please be wise. <laughs> Don't just, just lie on your bed, look at your wife, say, eh? <laughs> Give me a bank account, my brother. <laughs> Don't say what you cannot do, but at that point, you can say anything. That is joy. Joy, do you know what joy does? Joy, you know, you know joy. Ah, you don't know joy. Happiness. There's one thing I've seen here. Happiness and joy makes people choose to give. Anger <laughs> make people choose to destroy. Sadness make people choose not to give. When somebody is happy, they just want to give us. If you know, as you say, you want to wait, I think you wait because he's happy. But come tomorrow when he's angry. He say, Uncle, good morning. You don't care again for beggar. See your life. You walk a beg. You see your life. You never change, Steve. Mark, come on, my ass. <laughs> Some people promise you, you come to take it in the vex. It's because you came. <laughs> Wrong emotional state. Wives must learn emotional state, too. Yes, wife, any good wife knows how to study her husband. As he's entering the house, you don't look at the face. You say, oh, this one goes no clear. <laughs> oh, my shift. Oh, my. <laughs> so look at so. The way this man is coming today. You know, this, this my mother here. Yeah. When we were young, my mother used to tell us, he said, eh, that did he vex. I didn't have the always oh, she's no. She would just look at my father and say, he did vex. As he's coming, she just look at the eye, the face, the, the mandibles, and the, the way the man is facing. So he said, <laughs> just say, oh man, when I, when I talk about the read book, <laughs> just, you know, mothers are always our friends. She said, go and pretend to read, even be bad this night. <laughs> then that time, now she will not try to look for means to know what is happening. But let's see my father coming back. <laughs> he said, oh boy. This man be glad. You don't tell me, go on, as I read that textbook now. 
I told her too. Uh, daddy, they said our gemophology book. At that time, anything is giveable. <laughs> so, I'm trying to show you that your emotional state can influence your choices in life. So, they always say to people, don't make choices when you are happy. You may regret them later. <laughs> don't also make choices when you are angry. You may also regret it later. Learn to understand that eh, an emotion eh, lasts for a, a while. Oh. If you watch football match, you are happy. Now today, oh, after tomorrow, your head go clear. Oh. Your head go clear, so you never pay rent. You know, you know, you know the wrong wing cup. You, your head go clear. You, you will be faced with your problem. And you, so, be careful. An emotional state lasts for a while. Therefore, cannot be trusted to make a choice that will last for a life. You get it? An emotional state lasts for a while. Therefore, can, it's, it's not trustworthy to make a choice that will last for a life. A woman called with her husband. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come off my house. Come off my house. That thing you are saying, when the woman will pack her things and come out for your house, after four days, when the anger has gone, you will now, ah, baby, so I you come out, you come out. So, man, if you joke with you, it may be a joke, it be serious. Ha, come on, you come on, you too. I want to test your love for me, so you don't really love me. Yeah. So, if I tell you, come on, you can really come on, baby. I beg, come on fast, come on fast. Get out of here. You want beg, beg, fine. You know, it happens. You just tell your, your boyfriend, your fiance, it is over between us. Two days, no text messages. Three, four, five. You say, babe. <laughs> You say another text message. Now, nah, wow. <laughs> Next message. Somebody cannot feel joke with you. <laughs> My sister, you don't go. <laughs> hmm. Try. Next message. My stomach is spending me. But then they auto. I just they want to reply. Hmm. So even if I'm dying, you will not even care to think. Yes, it is over. Over means fini. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I move ahead? The third force that influences your choices is your <laughs> conscience. You don't, you don't. <laughs> don't worry, I'll, I'll tell you ask. <laughs> Number three is conscience. Somebody say conscience. Say conscience. Show me. <laughs> Hey, Jesus, who? you know, as I'm teaching now, any, anybody see him send me the message. <laughs> so, the pastor, Papa, they talking at me. I don't know. I beg, I preach, I preach. I don't know. John chapter 8, verse 7 to 9. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said, Is any one of you without sin? Let him be the first to throw a stone at her. So, people came to throw a stone at Jesus. At, at the woman that committed adultery go back to scripture please so he said okay if you have not sinned now nah, verse 8 again he stooped down and wrote on the ground verse 9 see verse 9 now at this those who had him began to go away one at a time the older ones first give me new king james okay then those who had it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one beginning from the older to the youngest watch this people brought a woman they say according to the law of moses she must be stoned and they came with stones to stone her then jesus said okay if you have not seen choose stone her their conscience entered the third force that influences your choices is your conscience. You know, say now, when man, they young, when you are young, right? When you want to steal, your conscience tell you, don't steal. And if you steal, you feel bad. But there is a dimension of doing something evil over and over until it kills your conscience. Now, instead, you don't longer, your conscience does not judge you. You begin judging your conscience. In other words, Listen to this. One time there was a one. Of, I remember this story. I always tell you. One of my friends, a, a girl came to his hotel, to his um, to his room, and he did not sleep with her. 
And you can see, he say, Chai, Massa. Have you been as some good man? So I, I wonder. Wait, you are saying that you are a good man because you did not fornicate. Now, he has gotten to the stage where instead, not fornicating is a sign of weakness. No conscience. Conscience is dead. A living conscience is what empowers a man to make choices that glorify Christ. A living conscience. Do you know why some of you do not steal? It's not because you don't have a need. It's because your conscience tells you it's not good to steal. It's conscience. Why do you steal? It's because I have need. Not only all we get, all we, even me, all we get need now so. So, having a need is not the reason to steal. But before a man can steal, he must have had a dead conscience. Because a dead conscience is what makes you take choices that do not glorify God. So, it's your conscience. Before somebody can kill another person, something has happened in his conscience. It is conscience first. Conscience. We all have needs. Why don't we steal? Because our conscience tells us don't steal. So at the end of the day, we really all do. Not just what we preach. What our conscience tells us. Until my message affects your conscience, it cannot affect your lifestyle. If I keep preaching, don't fornicate. Until don't fornicate, enter your conscience. You will keep fornicating. There are people here, they don't steal but they fornicate. For them, it is bad to steal. But when it comes to fornication, their conscience is dead in that area. So they can do it. When your conscience becomes alive, disobedience is out of your life. Your conscience. It is good to have a living conscience. Not a dead conscience. And don't forget, constant submission to the power of sin is what kills the conscience of man the first time you see money something tell you don't take and you take second time don't take and you take the third time you will not hear a voice again when we grow we hear two voices don't take another one take don't take take if we take second time don't take take we take the third time you only hear take 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 the voice of the Holy Spirit that says don't take has been killed. Because you have constantly. For somebody to remain as a virgin, the person must be totally convinced that sexual immorality is wrong before God. It must be convinced. But when a person has lost, lost their virginity, it becomes easy to sleep over and over again because as you keep sleeping, that voice dies. When the voice is dead, instead, to not spend a week with that sex become abnormal, something which is wrong before God. Why? Conscience is dead. May our conscience be quickened by the word of God. Amen. Sometimes it's good to pray. Oh God, give life in my conscience. Once your conscience dies, you become wicked. Some people have become wicked because their conscience is dead. You will see somebody, you are lying against a person and you know you are lying and you swear. You say, I swear. And you are lying. Dead conscience. If your conscience is alive, you can't do that. You need a living conscience. Am I talking to somebody here? Can I move ahead? Are you sure? Number four. Is it number four? Is your company. The kind of people around you and the kind of lifestyle they live will influence the choices you make. If a man is working with thieves, 
he will choose to steal. Even if he does not like it, they will influence him. The third, the fourth force that influences a man's choice is his company. Be very careful of the people you allow to come close to you. They will influence your choices in life. You were committed in church and you have a friend who does not go to church. Before you know, you stop going to church. If you want to come early to church, don't work with people that come late to church. Because by their spirit of late coming, they will kill your conscience that make you come early. You say, but if you come late, what will happen? No, will see me the service. No. Friends can kill conscience. Do I'm not in other day. Nobody will do I'm scared we don't die. Forgetting that a man may sin and not see a consequence. It doesn't mean there is no consequence. You don't see spiritual reward now. It will come later. Company. So, the company you have can influence you to make either good choices or bad choices in life. A girl, a man come and say, a married man come and say, sister, I love you, I want to be with you, and he's a married man. And she goes to her friend. And her friend has, goes out with married men. What would the friend tell her? So, already, that would be the choice. No, but take him, what did they do? But now she comes to a Christian, the Christian says, no, it's against the law of God. Because of this Christian, she may say no. So sometimes, is it sometimes, most of the time, our choices are influenced by the kind of people around us. Who is he that lives without advice? Who? All of us will ask advice, even me. Now, if the person who gives you advice is many marriages have been broken by wrong advice. If your husband talks to you, talk to him back. You're not the, you should know that you should know, he should know. And the person talking to you has no wisdom and influences you into a wrong choice of how to relate with your husband. And at the end of the day, you are the that's the problem. You are always the one to pay for it, not the people that give you the advice. If somebody advises you to sleep with their married man, and you sleep with him, and something happens to you, it is to you, it happens not to them. But also, God will also judge that person. Because Bible says, Whoever causes somebody to fall, you too, God will judge you. Both they fall, they fall, and, and they fall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number how many? Can I go to number five? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Number five is will power. Someone say will power. Or your will. Will power. Show me Luke 22 verse 41 to 43. And he was withdrawn from them about the stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Verse 42. Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Hey. And an angel appeared to him, strengthening him. Look here. Jesus has to die on the cross. <laughs> but his will doesn't want to die. But God's will, God wants him to die. Now, will power is important. Most often, people will choose what they want. Will. Will. Your will. Your will power. Your will power decides what you choose in life. Your will power. Your will power. Jesus said, let not my will bet your will. Jesus understood that if he relies on his own will, he will go against the will of God. Never ever trust your will to make a choice if you are ignorant of God's will about the matter. I don't know if I made some sense. I want to marry. And I want to marry this girl. I should not quickly accept her until I have prayed and God confirm it. Because my will may be wrong. So never ever trust your will to make a choice if you are ignorant of God's will about the matter. I can only work with my will when I know that my will agrees with the will of God. For example, let us pray at 5 o'clock. You wake up at five. You don't want to pray. You sleep back. What made you to sleep back? Your will. 
you didn't want to pray, so you will not pray. But can I shock you? If you want to pray, sleep will not be a hindrance. So, at the end of the day, the things, if we can manage our will, we will manage our choices also. Your will. Your will power speaks of that way you want them. Are you getting what I'm trying to explain to you? Your will. I call it will power. Will power. So, be careful. Jesus said, no, not my will, not my will, not my will, not my will. Let your will. Why? Jesus said, I don't trust my own will. That's why we say, he said, when you want to pray, say, our father, hallowed be thy name. Our father what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Who lives on earth? Men. Jesus says, you men, forget your will. Because the will of man can be manipulated by the spirit of Satan. He said, instead, pray for God's will to be done because it may be your will to travel to America not knowing you will go there and die. He said, eh, eh, don't, you, your will is to travel to America. Still pray so that God's will should be done. We should learn to submit ourselves to the will of God before we make choices in life, even when we have will. This is what I want to, but wait, what does God want? I will pray. Let him guide me. He may not speak to me, but he will guide me. I will pray first. It is humility to pray that God's will be done in your life. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you sure? Number, how many? Number six. Evil spirits. Evil what? Give me Genesis chapter six, verse one to seven. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, verse 2, read now, that the sons of God, angels, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wife of themselves of whom they chose. Angels left heaven and came and chose girls on earth and married by force. Marry me by force. Spiritual husband, spiritual. He said, marry me by force. And since the angels were stronger, the people accepted. They watch now. Move ahead. And the Lord said, read, my spirit shall not strive with man, for he is in this flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Verse 4. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came, that is, they slept with the daughters of men, they gave birth to giants. Verse 5. Please read. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of his thoughts of his heart was only evil. Look here. Give, another version says, every inclination of his thought. When an evil spirit possesses you, it will be hard to do the things that please God. I will show the difference as I'm closing them between evil spirits and the Holy Spirit. When an evil spirit possesses a man, it forces you to choose the things that do not glorify God. It forces you. Some people have, that's why I tell people, don't judge people. Some people need help. When you hear that a woman slept with a dog, you just say, ish, ish, ish. You don't know the spirit that is in her. Pray for her never judge people even when you see them in error they may be but jesus said in john 8 is it 32 he said whoever sin is a slave to sin so some people have been enslaved by evil spirits and they have been compelled to choose the things that don't glorify god when an evil spirit is in you do you think you will choose god evil spirits that is why when people have problems, when they come to us for prayer, our first thing is to cast the spirit out. Man of God, this my son steals a lot. We must cast that spirit out. No matter what we teach, no matter what we preach, as long as that spirit is still there, it will steal. Evil spirit. He said every inclination why did man become wicked the evil spirits on earth they possess men and anything they think is only bad 
a man possessed with an evil spirit will not find it easy to make choices that will glorify God. I tell you, it will be it will be a fight. You see, some of you here, yeah? they say fast. You cannot fast. Pray. You cannot pray. Even if you know that prayer is good for you, the evil spirit will tell you, "Don't pray nothing." I can preach here. Don't sleep with married men. The demon will tell you, forget what I might say. Go where you are going to now. It's an evil. You don't like it all. When I preach, you feel bad when I preach. But because you are under an evil spirit, after feeling bad, you will still do it. Don't be deceived. Guilty conscience is not repentance. That you feel bad about it does not mean you will stop doing it. It's only guilty conscience. Now, true. Let I was still with my remandem. After the message, the evil spirit said, Pass and go. Evil spirit. That's why I pray all the time for you people. Parents should pray for their children. Wives should pray for their husband. When the spirit possesses your husband, you, you, all this your mouth you are making, you will fast. You will see your husband sleeping with anything sleepable. It's not your husband, it's a demon that has possessed him. Your husband will come back and cry to you and say, Oni, well, I don't like this. When he, the next one or two weeks, the demon will just come down for two weeks. He said, go back. Wives must learn the art of prayer. Your husband come back, he slept with a woman. He starts saying, you foolish man, useless man. You are a stupid wife because you are fighting the flesh. Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. If your husband cheats on you, kneel down as a woman, buy that demon that sent him there. It's not a physical fight. Your child becomes stubborn. You take care, you beat him. Before you whip him, please pray for him and bind the spirit. When you beat the body, spirits are not pained. Evil spirits control the choices of men. You see, before I come here, you think I've not prayed. I've prayed though. You think I will come and say, don't sleep with married men. Forget that thing. Before I come and preach like this, I pray. I pray that any evil spirit that make girls in Egypt to sleep with married men, I bind them. I pray. Any evil spirit that want the men to steal, I bind. Any evil spirit that wants the men or the women to be unfaithful to their partner, I bind. Every evil spirit, I pray. I pray. Six hours, seven hours, ten hours, fifteen hours. I pray. This is not talk. We pray. Jesus said, Peter, the devil has come to sift you, but I have prayed for you. I have attacked the spirit. Once you have prayed over a matter and you attack the spirit, it doesn't matter what happened in the physical, you go quench. No, when you don't cut snake in head, you take or shake, shake, the thing will end. That shake, shake, now film trick, it will end. Once you have targeted the demon, you tell, you say, my husband, let me talk to you. You see, my husband, my husband, this is your thing I do, you will stop it. You say, my son, you are stealing. <laughs> You will stop stealing. You, you will be a pastor. Because you have prayed. You have prayed. People of God, this is not a joke. Evil spirits are everywhere operating in the lives of men to steal their power of choice. Everywhere. There is a difference between an evil spirit suggesting to you and possessing you. Satan did not enter if yet if ate the fruit imagine people now satan has entered them it is worse do you know the bible, do you know the bible says eh? the other day i read something and i began crying it says after that judas is carried as soul jesus he said he came back and said hey i have betrayed innocent blood he said and judas carried the money and ran and dropped it back to the pharisee he said collect your money i have betrayed innocent blood I said, what happened? And God showed me something. I read John 13, 27. He said, and the devil entered Judas. Judas could never betray Jesus on his right mind, although he was thinking it. He could never. Man, that guy was a disciple. Even if you say he was a thief, he was, a, he was an apostle of Jesus Christ. There was some element of good in him. He said, but when Satan entered him, finish. When he betrayed Jesus, Satan left. The man said, what have I done? And he went and killed himself. That was his mistake. He would have better gone and cried and prayed to God to kill himself. 
if you say it was that bad why did he kill himself he felt so much pain even the money if he said judas loved money why did he return the money so judas did not love money as we think something entered him john 13 27 he said and the devil entered him and jesus said what you are thinking to do go and do he was just a victim of circumstance the devil entered him the devil that's why i beg you do not think bad thoughts because satan may enter you to give them opportunity to perform them if a man does not want to beat his wife never think that you will beat her if you have the thought in your mind the day she will make you angry an evil spirit will come and say slap her you have been thinking about it this is time slap evil spirits they are everywhere you must pray for yourself pray and bind them they will they can make your life sorrowful evil spirits they will turn a sister in church into a prostitute in one month you see a sister that used to be on fire for the lord on fire for christ she will evangelize but when an evil spirit enter her she starts sleeping with brothers from the church what will make a choir member sleep with their pastor it, it cannot be it, it can't be normal it can't be desired for sex now lie it's the evil spirit because at least you should fear that he's a pastor but when the demon is there you are blinded to the consequence of the choice evil spirits when they operate they blind men to the consequences of their choices you you don't see the consequence Is somebody with me here? Tama Shakrosi in Black Tara Kings of Prayak Shala Proxia on the Prakshiva land. They see a cozy prash. Any evil spirit operating in your life in the name of Jesus today, I bind them. I declare their power is broken. I command the evil spirit. Go out the name of Jesus. Amen. Get out of their mind. Amen. Get out of their heart. Amen. Out of their marriage. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sit down. I said, even oh God. Number seven, and we pray, is the Holy Spirit. I kept this one for the last because this is the best influence. Some said the Holy Spirit. Show me John chapter 16 and verse 13. We have learned quite a lot today. Is it true? However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide. He will do what? He will guide you into all truths. For he will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak as he hears. Now watch this. He will do what? Listen to me. Evil spirit force. The Holy Spirit does not force. Mm -mm. He guides. Someone will say, man of God, the fire is burning me. If I don't go and open the church, I will die. It's not God. We read Genesis 6, what did God say? God said, my spirit will not fight with man. Do we not see there? Genesis 6, verse 5. We read it now. In Genesis 6, he said, my spirit shall not fight with man. God cannot force you to a hey God. If I don't marry this girl, I will die. Man of God, I say it's a lie, it's not the Holy Spirit. God cannot force you to marry somebody, even if it is his will. He will only guide you, accept it or not. It is Satan that force people to do what they don't want to do. It is Satan, not God. I want you to know sometimes some people, Satan is operating, they think it's God. He said, He shall guide, not he shall force, he shall guide. He shall guide. The Lord is my shepherd. It means I'm a sheep. Have you ever seen any shepherd that has tied rope on the neck of the sheep? No sheep is a dog. They, do you know why they tie rope on the neck of dogs? Because dogs cannot be led. Dogs must be dragged. But sheep have an ability to submit to leadership of a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You will see a man having 1,000 sheep. Just as he's moving ahead. The sheep are following. He guides them. He does not force them. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He leads me. Not he drags me. He leads me. He leads me. He leads me beside still waters. Even though 
I walk, he says, he guides me on paths of righteousness. He guides me. Psalm 23 talks about the Holy Spirit and Christians. The shepherd there is the Holy Spirit and we are the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd means, remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. He says, and the Spirit is the Lord. Eh? So the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. It means what? The Holy Spirit is my shepherd. He will not force you. He will guide you. You, you have to learn to be patient. Eh? You have to learn to be patient. Don't hurry. I'm praying for marriage. Lord, should I marry this person? God not just come and force you. Listen, God may show you dream once and he leaves it. He will never force you. You need to choose to obey him or not. But the devil, mm -mm. Do you get what I'm trying to be? What, I, what I'm explaining to you? It is the Holy Spirit that influences men to make choices that glorify God and are profitable to the fulfillment of their destiny. He is the one. If you are here, no matter here, if you watch well, we any time you never hear me preaching without saying Holy Spirit. I am not stupid. I can come here to preach and I say things that will destroy marriages. But when I have prayed like that, he takes control and he makes me choose to say the right things. Anytime people come to me with a problem, even in this church, before I solve it, I will say, Holy Spirit, grant me wisdom so that I can choose the right words. You think to have a church of 2,000 to 3,000 people is by only prayer? No. I must have a wisdom to manage conflict. This church has problems. But the way I manage them is why people don't go. Even when some go, they still come back. It's because of the way I have been taught and I'm led by the Holy Spirit. When people come to me for counseling, I can never do counseling without saying, Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Lest you give somebody a wrong counseling and break a marriage. No, do we? Prophetic ministry and pastor is a very dangerous office. A sister can, a brother can come, man of God, um, they say I have to travel to Canada or, or China. Where do I go? I'm going to say China. And he goes and die there. Holy Spirit, guide me. So that the one I will choose to say will be a good one for him. Take your time and pray. Pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit often guides our choices through the knowledge of the scripture. People that refuse to read the Bible cannot come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You know the way I pray? Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, guide me. How will he guide you? It's through your knowledge of the scriptures. So, when I read the Bible often, I don't lack guidance. Remember, you may not hear a voice. Eh? You may not see a vision. But what you will choose to do will be the right thing. You understand me? Because you don't have to go and pray, Lord, should I marry Karen? Or should I marry whatever? Oh, I will marry Karen. It's a lie. I may not hear marry Karen. But I will have a peace in my heart. And what I will do will be corrected. Once you have prayed, even if you have not heard, often when you pray to the Holy Spirit, you may not hear, but the choice is a correct one. Thank you, Lord. Rise on your feet.